Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, white, and blue trunks, and hailing from Clearwater, Florida. He weighed in at a ready 146 and one quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign with a record of 27 wins, no losses, one no decision, and 22 big wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making the third defense of his title, Ladies and gentlemen, here is the hard-hitting, undefeated, and reigning WBA welterweight champion of the world, introducing Keith Wontang Thurman. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black and white leopard trunks from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His weight, 146 and one half pounds. His record, 33 wins, no losses, 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, in his eighth world title appearance, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the two weight division world champion and the current undefeated WBC welterweight champion of the world, introducing Danny Swift Garcia. Danny Garcia, 33-0, 19 knockouts. And Keith Thurman, 27-0 with 22. Look at him, Boxman! Garcia has been the more favored adopted son by this new York crowd. And I think the reason why Keith is the favorite on paper, he has fought in consecutive fights. Six quality guys. Jose, Jose, Jesus Soto Carras, Julio Diaz, Bennett Hundu, Robert Guerrero, Luis Calazo, and Sean Porter. Whereas Danny Garcia has taken time off in between those top fights. Good right hand by Porter. Some of the feeling, too, is that a belief that Porter is the more natural 147 pound fighter. Yeah, and, and I think Thurman can do more inside the ring in terms of boxing and punching. Whereas Danny, he has a decent jab, but he's, he's more known for that left hook. So if Keith Thurman can stay disciplined and not sit and try to fight with Garcia, he have a much, much better chance of winning this fight. Good hook by Thurman. Jab by Thurman. At the start of the night, I told you the keys to me would be Garcia's left hook and Thurman's right uppercut. It appears that it is now Keith's left hook and Danny's right uppercut. Well, so far for what they're showing, the question is whether they Keep will go slow. back to their calling card. Garcia got the left hook, although low. He did launch it. Oh, Danny got a nice left hook. hook. High on the head of Keith, and Keith took it well. And Keith is just trying to set the tone. Right! Danny don't early don't that don't it's going to be a rough fight. Back in the neck. He's got it. 
boss. Yo, more of damn it. Rinse out. Okay. You're okay. You're okay. Rinse, yeah, you good. So Keith Thurman nicknamed him one time. He came out the start of the round, right hand on the back, but followed a nice step hook, and then he followed up with an open hand right. He had Dick Danny really. Danny was able to survive that, but the, the tone was set. Here's another angle. Left hook, and watch his right hand. Dead on the chin. Danny conditioning, I think, played a major role. The hardest sequence we've seen Garcia ever hit. Another look at Thurman launching the ball. Right, right on the chin. On the draw. I don't know what kept Danny Garcia up. Well, he showed you a lot about the unbeaten record and what he was able to endure. So here we are in round two. Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman, Dave Bontempo, and Brian Adams with you at Barclays in New York. An explosive opening round for the end for Thurman. See, now Thurman came out flat footed trying to stalk Danny Garcia. The first round, he used his legs. He was in and out, throwing a group of shots. Left foot right in and out. Now he's more stationary and flat footed. This is what played in the hands of Danny Garcia. But sometimes the shots you don't see is what hurt. And those wild shots from the outside is what got Danny in trouble. Now Thurman is more conventional. So Danny can prepare for those shots. So why would Thurman check? Overconfident. Think he got Danny already, but again, we've seen Garcia in this position. Usually the shots from so far out, normally they're low percentage to connect, but he did manage to connect from far outside. But the fact that Garcia is still up may be a testament to the fact that they were from so far away. Right, the shortest shots is what really paralyzes him. But that first round, Keith Thurman used a lot of energy. Now look who's stalking this round. It was Danny Garcia. Garcia did not look the worst for him. Right 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 lands a nice right to the bottom. One thing Keith Thurman is not good at is Well, these guys are not good jabbers. According to the copy box numbers, Garcia landing about 20% of his jabs, Keep it up. even less, and Thurman not quite 20 percent they don't use it as some fighters do right most fighters use the jab to set things up one of these guys have power shots so we need to set anything up garcia trying not to be cornered here in thurman i think if one of these guys can in. commit to a jab that can set the tone on how this fight is going to go. See, Thurman jabs, he forces Garcia to reach to try to counter. So you have to work the jab, get behind the jab. Good hook by Thurman as we come to the end of round two. Thurman took charge. Second round, you see a nice right hand to the body. Danny Garcia trying to set the tone. Both of these guys have landed good power shots through two rounds and into the third. Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman. Garcia 33 and 0, 19 knockouts from Philadelphia. Keith Thurman 27 and 0, 22 knockouts from Clearwater. Both of them have. 147 pound championship belt. Thurman, Danny Garcia with the right hand. Garcia stayed up. Uh, Garcia was trying to grab Thurman low. And Thurman spun around him. He was unable to grab him. Thurman was one step away from having a clear shot at Garcia with hands down by his side. Nice right hand by Thurman. He just showed the jab, 
and then came in with the right hand. Again, he took the shot well. But see, right, right here, the distance between these two, one guy should be trying to establish a jab. Both guys just looking for power punches right now. Well, both guys are used to a power solution in their yeah, fights. exactly. But at the world-class level, because both of these guys are A-level, you have to set things up. Danny's looking at the, the counter down the hook. I can see the, his body position. He's looking at the counter down the hook. Oh, just like that. the body by Garcia. That's his money punch. Pulling back at Garcia. And, and Thurman has done a good job with letting his right hand go. He's trying to force Danny Garcia to keep that left hand in a defensive position. If he's unable to throw the left hand, then Thurman is not in danger. So, excellent strategy for Thurman to keep throwing his right hand. Garcia lands one right hand to the body. Looking to set up that left hook. Thurman is the one moving and showing the jab here, but when he reaches with the jab, Garcia tagged him with the right to the bottom. Nice right hand by Garcia. One thing about this matchup, when these guys land, a lot of the punches, punches have a lot on them. Yes. There's no mediocre right hand by either guy. Nice right, right hand, hand to the head by Thurman. Again, Thurman is trying to keep that left hand. Good round. Run. For Danny Garcia, you can see him stalking for a double jab. Nice right hand to the ribcage area of Thurman. Guys. Nice left hook to the body of Thurman, and then a hook to the head, followed by right hand. So and Danny Garcia is trying to mix up his punches, head and body. And we are in round four, and Danny Garcia received a, a torrent of conflicting information between rounds. One of them you're doing perfect, one of them is it's not over yet. <laughs> He's not doing anything. How is he going to process all of that? Yeah, he sat down and dad said, you're fighting this fight, what are you doing? And he said, you're doing just fine. <laughs> it's not over yet. Right, it's not over yet. We got him where we want him. He said, take him to that dark street. And that's what I mean about Danny Garcia. He's not afraid to walk through fire, and after he gets on out there in the fire, walk through hell to win. That's Danny Garcia's mindset. Well, he has been receiving fire and some flashes of hell from Keith Thurman in the early going. Thurman has stopped throwing that right hand. The right hand is there for Thurman. He stopped throwing. He's the one trying to jab now. And now Garcia is trying to set him up to walk him into that left hook. Just like that. Garcia got in his just ahead of Thurman trying to get in his. Thurman needs to circle to his left. Most of his movement is to his right. Right into the left hook of Garcia. Keep circling left. And go one, two. To get Thurman. But it's an interesting challenge because if you're used to moving one way, do you move the other way to stay away from the guy's power hand? Or do you do what's best for you normally? Well, that, that's why it's called doing your homework. Training camp, you have six months of training camp. Good right hand by Garcia. Nice left hook by Garcia. But some fighters are just comfortable moving left or right. And then it's an interesting question of how much they will change based on their opponent. Jab to the body by Garcia. Hook by Thurman. 
Nice hook by Thornton to the head. No, 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 no. And Garcia has been unable to really set up the right position for that left hook. Because every time he gets set, Thornton no, no, either moves the opposite no. way or he throws the right hand. Just like that, the right hand. Every time Garcia gets set, he can do some homework. Start round five, it has been a very good one between Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman as they have this welterweight unification fight. Dave Bontempo and Brian Adams with you at Barclays. Well, how do you see it so far? Four. Well, I have a three to one in favor of Keith Thurman. I thought Danny won the last round, but I gave the first three to Keith Thurman. I thought he did enough work, especially in the first two rounds. But the memo on Keith Thurman is he fades late, especially when he gets into the body. And we have seen Danny Garcia is back. Right, 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 right. Let's see what happens when we get to rounds 9, 10. Good jab by Garcia. Sometimes these guys, like the last two jabs by Garcia, he just pushed them out there. Right, his jab is more of a right, range the It's nothing to hurt you, this range. As soon as I touch you, I knock into something else. And when he saw the gloves of Thurman, he didn't follow through all the way with the jab. He just figured there was nothing there at that time to follow with. Thurman needs to start working more again on that right hand. Look that right hand, just like that. And that's the right hand, though, he has success. He moved laterally, and then when Garcia moved toward him, he figured out the angle and scored. Yet, it took a lot of time to set that up. And another good one by Thurman, and Garcia just took it. It did not even shift him. Not yet, but he can't take too many more goals. Hook by Thurman. First minute of the round, good for Garcia. Thurman has landed some powerful shots. Second minute of the round. Might think that this round is up in the air. Garcia blocked Thurman's hook and landed one of his own. Good right hand by Thurman. And every time Keith Thurman throws that right hand, he rolls with anticipation that Danny would throw the left hook. Some high octane offense from both fighters as Garcia and Thurman wrap up round five. Come on. Well, Keith Thurman, he lets the right hand go, he has success. You see, Danny blocked that, but it had the effect because he has Danny thinking about that right hand. And every time he throws that right hand, Danny just tries to fire back. Sixth round, Garcia and Thurman. Settling in, Garcia showing some good jab ability in the last round and some good hooks to the body. Thurman is playing the waiting game on Garcia. He's landed some excellent shots after he tries to make Garcia do the dirty work. And I think Garcia on the inside, he should switch up and start trying to fight low. Come in low. Thurman is comfortable with throwing that overhand right. So go in low. Force Thurman to start going either straight punches or punching down. He's talking with that overhand right. You see, the fans uh, don't regard the sweet science as anything more than science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> they they fans, want a war. Fans can be a little brutal sometimes. Impatient. I didn't come here to see guys box. Right. 
Nice body shot by Keith Thurman. So not, much action, not much action happening yet in this round. It's Garcia getting off first and Thurman trying to counter. That's his game, but he's a little far out. It looks like both guys are just waiting for that perfect punch. You see there? Both guys are waiting for that shot to happen as opposed to trying to create it. See, that's how you create a touch to guy. He threw a jab, didn't land to the right hand, didn't land. The Thurman reacted. So you have to build off of that. Right hand by Garcia. And this pace favors Danny Garcia. The busy pace favors Thurman because he's heavy handed. Looping hook by Thurman. Good. Hook to the body, the right hand by Garcia. Thurman back at it, but Garcia got the best of that exchange. But that left hook sort of started down to the body, but ended up on the chin of Keith Thurman. Danny dipped as if he's throwing to the body, but it ended up on the chin. So the question in round six, Garcia looked busier and got off first to Thurman. Is that how the judges will see this round? As we start round seven, Danny Garcia receiving a bit of a contradiction in the corner because his father said, don't drop your left hand. But how's he going to throw that hook? Yeah, how are you going to throw the money punch? It, you know, midway through the fight, when they clash heads. Watch your heads, guys, watch your heads. Midway through this fight, I have a score of 50 and 56 in favor of Keith Thurman. Four rounds of two. Garcia on a little bit of a run. And Thurman got the big early lead. And Andy Good Garcia, hook. you know, he, he had the right advice. He says, he's looking for that open hand right. You got to keep your left hand up. But as you said, how's he going to get that left foot going if his left hand stays positioned to the chin? It's simple. As soon as um, Keith Thurman put over him left, catch it and count it real quick. He has a quick enough left hand to catch and fire at the same time. Garcia trying to cut off the ring here on Thurman. Good right hand by Garcia. Makes Thurman come to him. Thurman's right hand hits the shoulder. And Garcia inexplicably backed up there because he was stalking Thurman and then just went straight back so he could catch right hands like that. <laughs> nice right hand there by Keith Thurman. And, and Danny Garcia, his corner told him to, um, he took his best right hand. But sometimes you can't just always be lying on your chin. You just take the kill. And that's the last defense so you don't want to have to rely on it so much and a good right to the chin by Thurman in this round although it's Garcia coming at Thurman Thurman has been able to stalk and come back with some heavy shots that was turned around he won the late he won the three or four times Garcia trying to score with the left hook, but when Thurman moved, the left hook was low. Up, Daddy. Good right to the body by Thurman. Thurman with some heavy shots in the seventh. Thurman look nice right hand. He's the right hand on the end of the round. 
get another look at some of the good things he did. Overhead, overhead action. Looking for the overhand right. Garcia has Come done on. a better job to pass the round to get under him. That's what, that's what, Fox. that's what, that was borderline low. And the warning ensued. Into the eighth, Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman. Garcia 33 and 0, 19 knockouts. Thurman 27 and 0, 22 knockouts. Welterweight unification. Quick start for Thurman. Mid rounds rally by Garcia. And these are the rounds that Danny Garcia is relying on. Keith Thurman to fade. Rounds 8, 9, and 10. So let's see what happens. Garcia just missed a short left hook. Garcia has been the one stalking in the last three or four rounds. And if the rounds are close, you'll get them for the perception of aggression. aggression yes. Thurman has enjoyed some counter punching big moments, but can he rely on it so much? And one thing I have not seen from Keith Thurman is that right up the top. Garcia hasn't really been in front of him for that opportunity. That overhand right was there. Look at Garcia's left hand. But Garcia's getting under that right hand now. Early on in the fight, he wasn't able to get under it. Nice job. See, when, when Thurman's on his toes, he has more success with landing punches, especially from the outside. And he scores with a nice right hand there. And when he goes flat for it, he gives Danny the opportunities to land those short punches. Why does the guy come off his toes and go flat footed? Nice right hand by Keith Thurman. Good right hand by Garcia. And Thurman back with the hook. Nice body shot by Thurman. He was susceptible to a counter, but Garcia could not get one there. But now both guys are reduced to throwing one or two shots as opposed to throwing multiple punches. That's early on in the fight, what they were doing. The crowd is getting us unsettled, but this is a good fight. It is, and it comes down to the end now of round eight. <laughs> Ninth round action, Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman. Welterweight unification fight from the sounds of the corners. It's Thurman's fight to lose. How about you? Yeah, I think Thurman is well ahead. And it appears that when he gives movement just like this, Danny doesn't do anything. Danny waits for him to stop before he attacks. Danny has to create opening when Keith is on his toes. Move forward on your jab. Cut him off. You got to make him get flat footed. If you're Danny Garcia. Because the movement, Danny does nothing to keep moves. When, when Thurman moves, the sense you get from Garcia is that he expects Thurman to stop. That correct. Correct. He's waiting for him to stop. As opposed to making him stop. Now, what is the edge that Thurman gets in your view when he goes up on his toes? What is the the difference that enables him to score. Well, because he has the longer arms. So from the outside, he can see more. Remember, he's more of the boxer than Danny Garcia. So from the outside, when he has, he's on his toes, he can see more because Danny is just trying to stalk him and looking at throw one or two shots. So the advantage for him on his toes is being able to see him. And then the comfort zone for Danny, is Keith Thurman standing in front of him trying to fight. 
he can see more to land those short shots when Keith is not moving. And so Garcia has had some better moments when Thurman is in front of him. But from the outside like this, Keith moving, jabbing, punching up on the fly, Danny Garcia does nothing. Body shot by Thurman. And when the crowd is dissatisfied as you're sensing it, but well, that's good for Thurman because this is a Garcia house. Right. And I think the crowd just want more action because of the press conference the guys had, the weigh-in. There's a lot of bickering back and forth. That's nice good for the body by Thurman and the right hand by Garcia. Come up, Daddy, keep up. There's a lot of attention on this fight, too. Sugar Ray Leonard, who's in the house, uh, talking about how this welterweight unification fight reminded him of Tommy Hearns' matchup, 1981. That was a super fight after super press tour. 1981. And then Dr. Brown was wasn't a bad welterweight. of 12, Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman. Thurman riding some momentum. He's getting real, real impressive when he's on his toes. I think it's, it, he has the edge in sight when he's on his toes. Well, they're smelling it in the corner of Thurman saying we're going home with two titles tonight. They're starting to branch out in their predictions. But we can't get complacent. We saw Chad Dawson clearly winning. Two rounds left in the fight. Got complacent. He, that, he went south in a hurry. Hey, let him go, no punches. And he went mentally south first. As long as you stay strong mentally, it's okay to take rounds on. The crowd tries to summon up a rally for Garcia. That's took by Thurman. Hey, In the lateral movement, I still say it's giving me the rest of the trouble. Keep him up! Well, Garcia had Thurman in front of him at certain points in this fight and was able to do his best work, but when he has to lunge and chase, good hook by Thurman. And I, I think Thurman just came out and set the tone perfectly in the first round. He jumped all over the game. Yeah, he hurt Garcia in the opening round, and that was a situation in which they came straight at each other and now it's the movement, and we're seeing Thurman get more into his movement in the second half of this fight. Danny, keep trying to get that left hook to the body. Right, no punch, no punch. Get back, no pusher. He's trying to set up that left hook to the head. What's been subtle for Thurman is there was a point where it looked like his movement was retreat. And now, the movement, even if he's going back on the sideways, and it has more of an offensive purpose. Right, right. And he appears to have made some kind of a shift throughout this fight to make that movement more purposeful. But he moved nice right up with it on the inside by Thurman. Danny landed a nice long left hook. Thurman counted on oh, oh. the inside. Short up the hook. So they heated up. As round 10 draws to a close, a nice hook by Thurman. Ooh, nice body shot at the end of the round. Thurman got hurt, yes. Yeah. We start round 11, Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman in the aftermath of a round that went back and forth, uh, especially that left hook to the body by Garcia at the end. But what do you think of that last round on the scoring standpoint? Well, I gave the last round to Danny Garcia. I thought he, when he landed, um, 
these punches have more purpose. And especially that last, last left hook to the body at the end of the round. I think he put that round in his pocket too. Into the 11th with Garcia stalking. And, and you can tell by his body language he thought he enjoyed a good 10th round because a little bit more of a zip when he came out here. Yeah, he has that urgency without being desperate. So you can tell he wants to step it up, but he's not going to be desperate and reckless. He's still composed, he's still within the top, but he's looking to land harder shots. Yeah, with the right hand by Garcia, a block. Thurman on the move, lands a nice left hook to the body. There is more purposefulness and intensity in the attack of Garcia. From the end of round 10, carrying on into here. As he tries to cut off the ring on Thurman. Thurman getting all the advertisers into the picture <laughs> of the corner posts. But the thing about it now is Thurman is just moving one way. Now he's just moving to his right. There you go to his left. But for the most part, the past round and a half, why get it the land with left hooks in the bottom? So if you're going to get lateral movement, you have to mix it up and confuse the guy. Thurman's hook is too far away that he wants it from, so it is blocked. <laughs> Garcia cutting off the ring, and this round has the perception of aggression. Thurman boxing like he's trying to sit on a lead. But he's also, the word would be conning the judges. Because every now and then he'll stop and throw one or two punches. Right now. Stationary, throw a couple of punches, and he gets back on the fight. So he's conning the judges into thinking that he's actually fighting. I, I think this round, they won't buy the con job. Garcia has enjoyed a clear round of stalking. Keith Thurman. Come on, man. Come on, man. No problem. Well, smart, smart, smart. Smart, smart. 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 He don't have the start. And here we are for the finale. The fans are on their feet. At Barclays Center in New York, Dave Bontempo and Brian Adams with you. The unification fight. Garcia brings the 33-0 record in. Thurman 27-0 with 22. Thurman started quickly. Garcia rallied in the middle. Thurman started to pull away. Garcia rallied again. Where do you see it after 11? Have a score. 106, 103, Garcia, North Town Thurman. So if there is any close round, say, earlier that went the other way, now you're looking at a one-point fight. So right. Thurman moving. Not throwing. Darting in now and then. And he's moving more into his eyes into the hook, but he started out moving just to Again, his right hand, knowing that he doesn't have a right hand, he's not going to have a right hand. He's moving to his right hand. Crowd liking what Garcia did in the last two rounds, and knowing that this is the end, trying to implore him. Good right hand by Garcia. There's that nice right hand. Right. So keep Thurman shooting nice left hook to the head. Thurman shouldn't just give this round away. I don't think the lead is that safe. Good left hook by Thurman. Plus, you also know if you're Thurman, even though the, the judges have their base, this is a Garcia crowd. You know, the guy might get a little edge from the crowd on one round. Here's Garcia. 
the right hand. Garcia is not cutting the ring off. He's just following the cutter. He needs to cut the ring off. The body shots by Garcia. Look for the old man right from Garcia. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, uh, we go to the scorecards. We have a split decision. <laughs> Judge at ringside, John McKay scores about 116 to 112 in favor of Keith Thurman. <laughs> Judge Kevin Morgan sees about 115 to 113 in favor of Danny Garcia. And judge at ringside, Joe Pasqual scores about 115 to 113 in favor of the winner. He is still undefeated. He is now the WBA and WBC Unified Welterweight Champion of the World, Keith One Time Thurman. to be an argument, it's exactly what it was. 115, 113 is the side of the card. 116, 112 for Thurman, 115, 113 for Garcia.